Hello everyone, I'm John Dawson. And I'm Angelica Dawson. And this is the Emmanuel Mennonite Road Trip Worship Service for August the 22nd. John, I am super excited to be on this Emmanuel Road Trip, aren't you? Yes, I love road trips. Just being out on the open road, you know, driving through all the wonderful scenery that we see. Meeting new people, yeah. seeing new places. Uh, just being out and about, you know, during COVID, you get a little stir crazy. Exactly. So yeah, I'm super excited about this. Let's make sure that we've got everything that we need for our road trip. Have you got the checklist? Right here. Okay, okay. so car? Check. Uh, Google Maps? Oh, you haven't got your phone. Well, that's okay. We know how to get to Sherbrooke. No problem. You got yours. Okay, check. Yeah. All right. Uh... Other important stuff. Yeah, like what else do we need? Like like tunes. 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 Absolutely. CDs, because yes, we're boomers. <laughs> what else? All right. Oh, and of course. What? Junk food. Ah, junk snacks. food. Snacks. Oh, okay, we've got snacks. Okay. We're gonna be okay. Okay. So, um. And it's gonna be right out there. So I brought my sunglasses. Oh yeah, along. I got my shades too. There we shades go. are here. Got shades handy. Okay, great. All right. Okay. Uh, but you know what? Since we're visiting Sherbrooke in Vancouver, um, and it is a worship service, we're probably going to need a couple other things. Like, we're probably going to need our Bible. Good, Good idea. Good idea. And uh, Joel told me that today's message is being delivered by Pastor Kevin Barkowski, and he's talking from Psalm 125 about the protection of the Lord and our decision-making around that. And I think that sounds really interesting. So I am going to take along my notebook thing and my pen so that I can take notes. Also a good idea. And since we're worship leading, we probably want to remind folks that they should check their bulletins for any upcoming events. Good point. And yes, glad you mentioned that too, because Fran reminded me that to let everybody know that next week, well, no, not next week, September 5th at 10.30 is our first in-person service. And so we're supposed to look for more information in next week's bulletin and the news in brief. Right. And it's a good thing that we remember that. And, you know, actually, John, I remembered one other thing. What's that? Well, this is actually a virtual road trip. Does that mean what I think it means? Probably. It, it means that we don't actually need to be in the car. Uh, we probably don't need Google Maps. Folks are probably already tuned in and we're going to be joining Sherbrooke online. Yeah, but can we still have the snacks? Yeah, I think we can still have the snacks. All right, okay. let, let's go. Okay, well, before we dig into the snacks and before we dig into the service, let's open up with this call to worship from Psalm 125. We can trust God. God is like a mountain, rock solid. God loves all the people. The poor, the disabled, the outcast, the stranger. We can depend on God. God feeds the hungry, heals the sick, and restores relationships. Praise our loving God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 Hey everyone, welcome to Sherbrooke Mennonite Church. We're really glad you're here. We're going to worship Jesus together. We're going to learn about him. We're going to be challenged and we're going to grow together. So we want to just thank you for joining us online and uh, wish that you're going to have an awesome time together with us. So God bless you and let's begin. Psalm 146, verse 1 says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord while I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Amen. Well, we're going to share with you a song that's been going viral with our church YouTube channel. And uh, this is just uh, hilarious how sometimes songs just take off. So this is one of our songs that many people across the world are now enjoying. God bless you. Say, by strength. 
white as snow And when before the throne I stand in Him complete Jesus died my soul to save My lips shall still repeat snow. He washed it white as snow. He washed it white as snow. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Oh, praise the one who paid my debt and raised this life up from the dead. Well, we want to extend a special welcome to Emmanuel Mennonite Church joining us this Sunday. Welcome, Emmanuel. It's good to have you here with us. Uh, one thing that we do different at Sherbrooke is we have a family sharing time before the sermon where we share around the room and pray for each other. And then after the sermon, we have a sermon reflection time gives room for everyone to share what the Spirit of Jesus is saying to them during the message. So we invite you to do the same today in your home as well. Just pause and talk around the room and share. So again, welcome to Emmanuel Mennonite Church. We're glad you're with us. All right, today's scripture reading is uh, Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be shaken but endures forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and forevermore. The scepter of, his, of the wicked will not be re remained over the land allotted to the righteous. For then the righteous might use their hands to do evil. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, to those who are upright in heart, but those who turn to crook, crooked, uh, crooked ways, the Lord will banish with the evil evil of their sinners. Peace upon Israel. Thanks, Maya. Have you ever wrecked your life? Have you ever hurt someone that you loved by making a wrong decision? 
Genesis chapter 11, we meet this person named Abraham. God says to Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. And all the world is going to be blessed because of you. So Abraham embraces God's promise and he travels all the way. He leaves his family, travels all the way from Ur to the promised land, Canaan. And it's just an amazing story of him having this incredible faith that he would leave his family, trust God, and go to this unknown place. Well, everything, if you read this story before, everything goes really awesome for Abraham and his wife, Sarah. That is for one chapter. <laughs> the next chapter, the very next chapter, there's a famine in Canaan. Sarah and Abraham have to travel down to Egypt. They meet the Pharaoh. Pharaoh thinks Sarah is good-looking, and Abraham gets scared because he thinks Pharaoh's going to kill him. Pharaoh says, I really like this person, Sarah. You gonna, yeah, close that door, thanks. But in the end, Pharaoh gets really, I'm oh, sorry, Abraham gets really scared. And he lies and says Sarah, his wife, is, is not his wife, it's actually his sister. And he pawns her off to Pharaoh to save his own skin. Imagine Sarah just dehumanized. Imagine Abraham throwing away all God's promises. But before Pharaoh could adopt Sarah as his wife, God gives Pharaoh a vision and tells him, this wife, Sarah, that you are getting from Abraham, that is actually Abraham's wife. What are you doing? I'm going to destroy your kingdom. You've taken this precious person from Abraham. I'm going to wipe out your entire kingdom. Pharaoh freaks out. And here you have this, uh, this picture. It's actually 500 years old, this picture. And so you see Pharaoh is returning Sarah to Abraham. Now look at their faces. Pharaoh's angry. He's going, Abraham, what is wrong with you? Why would you pawn off your own wife to me and lie to me? You almost wrecked my own kingdom. If God hadn't saved the day, you would have destroyed my entire kingdom. You look at Sarah. Look at her sadness. Looks like she's almost traumatized, right? The and she's saying, Abraham, what is wrong with you? You pawn me off to save your own skin? I can't believe this. And then you look at Abraham. Shame on me, he's saying. What is wrong with me, he's saying. My wife's never going to trust me again, he's saying. I threw away all the promises that God gave me. And as we're watching, as we're listening, as we're reading this story, what is our reaction? Abraham, you're a jerk. You're so mean. You have no faith. You're so fearful. You're so selfish. And then you would think that Abraham would learn his lesson, right? Because this was a pretty harsh lesson. Eight chapters later, what happens? Anyone remember the story? He does the exact same thing with another king. Exactly. And the king comes back mad with Sarah. God luckily saves the day. But we go, Abraham, can't you learn anything? And it's easy to judge Mr. Abraham, isn't it? It's like, what is wrong with Abraham? But... When we are honest, and when we think through our lives, think of a moment maybe that you were stressed. Think of a moment that maybe you threw one of your loved ones 
under the bus because you were stressed. Think a moment of when you were anxious and you made a wrong decision and you hurt someone that was really, really dear to you. Think of a time when you were at wit's end and instead of letting God rule your life, instead of letting God keep the reins, you took the reins of your life and you tried to outdo the Holy Spirit and in the process messed up all of God's plans. Romans 3.23 says it better than I could ever. For all have sinned. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. So our psalm for today is a humble psalm. So think about what is the most hurtful embarrassing thing that you have ever done to someone. And then let's all come up to the mic and share that story. Now, of course, that's a joke. I'm not going to ask that. That would be the most difficult thing to do. But it is so humbling to think of our most humbling moments. When we've been pinned down by stress or anxiety, and then we go out and act like an Abraham. Psalm 125, our scripture for this morning, and we've been singing about it already, is one of the most life-giving psalms to the Abrahams of the world. Psalm 125 verse 1 says, Those who trust in the Lord, that means Abraham who is trusting, that means me who is trusting, and that means you who is trusting. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. So think about whatever you feel humbled about. Think about this mistake that you know you've done Think about the way you've been like Abraham even this week. And our verses are saying, even if you have given up on God, God never gives up on you. If you were to break your arm, which I hope doesn't happen, but if it does, would the people you love think any less of you? And the people that love you, would they think any less of you because your arm was broken? They don't reject you because your arm is broken. And same with God. God does not reject us even though he knows that we are broken. Even though that he knows that his children make mistakes. Even though he knows that his children are going to doubt him and not have confidence in him. Verse 2 continues, As a mountain surrounds Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time on and forevermore. Now there are seven mountains in Jerusalem. Um, I think some of you have been there. I don't know if you've seen the mountains surrounding. Yeah. So here's a picture. So on the right-hand side at the top, there's Mount Scopus, Mount Mount of Olives, or Olivet, and Mount Corruption. So that's kind of a high ridge on one side. And then right in the center is Mount Offal. And then uh, down below it is Mount Zion. Now Mount Zion was the original Temple Mount in the original Jerusalem, today's Temple Mount. And then on the left, in the middle, is the new Mount Zion. Now, uh, apparently that's where the upper room is thought to be located. Some of you have been to Israel. And then Anatonia Hill is up kind of in the top middle. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. If you're like anyone here, we all know we will fail, we will sin, 
we will mess up like Abraham. And maybe you feel kind of like a failure. Maybe you feel like Abraham. And maybe you think that God is no longer protecting you and you've given up. But our verses say, it's not going to be your behavior that defines your protection and security. It's not going to be your wall of good works that you put up all along, all around you, that's going to protect you. Rather, it is God. God is your wall of security. You are in God's presence even now. And only through the saving grace and righteousness of Jesus Christ our Lord. It's not through our wall of good works, but it's through Jesus' righteousness. So verse 3 continues. Now this is complicated. So when I read this, I had to read this, read this about four times in four different translations, but I'm going to try to explain it the way I understand it, or that I feel God oops, taught me this week. For the scepter of wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous, so that the righteous not might, or sorry, the righteous might not stretch out their hands to do wrong. So scepter in Hebrew is like a mark of authority. Okay, so what did Abraham do to stretch out his hand as a mark of authority? He pawned off Sarah because he wanted to save his own skin. In other words, he didn't trust in God's authority. He trusted in his authority and his scepter and pawned off his wife. By doing that, he nearly messed up everything. That's the Old Testament. But the New Testament says something almost completely different. The Old Testament says Abraham is really messing things up. He's a huge sinner. The New Testament, Romans chapter 4, verse 23, says, Therefore, Abraham's faith was also credited to him as righteousness. So in the Old Testament, we see Abraham as a sinner. But in the New Testament, Abraham is being said, he's a saint. So how can it be that in the Old Testament, he's a sinner, but the New Testament, he's a saint? And the answers are found in Psalm 125. that says, just as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so God surrounds Abraham, so God surrounds you. And that is why Psalm 125 is such a humble song. Because we, if we're going to read it, it means that we're not doing this on our own. It's only going to be through God. It's only going to be through God's hand. It's not going to be the scepter, our authority, our way of handling things, our way of getting out of things. Our righteousness is simply, we humbly accept Jesus you are our Lord. We're not doing this. We have failed, but you are good. Not our authority, but your salvation arm. Now, here's a meme. Now, so your friend says, how's life? And then me says, everything's on track. Thanks. But then you see the track, and the track is completely destroyed. Right? So, again, that's a, that's a good meme to remember, and it really relates to our verses this morning. So here are three Psalm 125 questions for you to think about. So if I drive my car 300 kilometers an hour through the Fraser Canyon, will God protect me? After all, doesn't Psalm 125 say God's going to protect me? I have this friend, and he keeps speeding, and when he's speeding, he keeps getting into accidents. And when he gets into accident, he keeps breaking his leg. And so he comes to me and goes, Kevin, can you pray for me that I stop breaking my legs? And I'm like, but you're... Tr you're breaking your legs because you're speeding and you're getting into accidents. 
maybe stop speeding. I know what I'll do. I'll pray for you that you stop speeding. And he's like, no, no, no. I want to keep speeding. Just pray for me that I don't break my legs anymore. After all, what does Psalm 121 says, right? You can quote it. God's going to protect me. So start praying. Question two. When our kids were young, we had to decide, will we um, give them a vaccination for diphtheria? So when they're around two or three years old, I think you give your kids a vaccination for diphtheria. But Psalm 125 says God's going to protect them. God's going to protect me. So should I actually give my kids a shot for diphtheria? Verse 3 says, This is a protection partnership. God and us. It's not just God doing all the work. God is involved in our life. God is protecting us as we use the wisdom that he gives us. And so each time there's something new, we use the wisdom and we use the community of faith, right? And we talk about it and go, is this, which is the best way to protect ourselves? What is God saying in this? Now, question three relates to this. Where is an... Where is the line between taking risks and having the common sense that God gives us? In other words, can we claim protection when we make unhealthy, destructive decisions? You think about Abraham, right? Uh, there's a close-up of Abraham and Sarah. Abraham sinned twice against his wife. Now, I have this friend who keeps looking at pornography. And it destroys his wife every time. And his wife wants to leave him. And my friend comes to me and says, Pray for my wife so that I uh, pray for my wife so she decides not to leave me. After all, Psalm 125 says God's going to protect me. But is this really what Psalm 125 says? So my answer was to him, I'll pray for you, but differently. I said, go to a counselor, face your fears of going to a counselor, work on your pornography addiction like there's no tomorrow, and I'll pray for you that you'll find a good counselor who's going to be harsh with you and honest with you that you'll stop. You just can't selfishly and sinfully do whatever you want and then expect God to protect you. So verses 4 and 5 says even better. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good and to those who are upright in their hearts. But to those who turn aside to their own crooked ways, the Lord will lead away with evildoers. It's a partnership protection, right? God in us. And our verses close, peace be upon Israel. And so as we close, we want you to think of a situation in your life, a mountain that you're facing. You don't know what's coming. You don't know how to solve this issue. You don't know what's around the corner. I have this friend who's really sick and because she's really sick her husband left her and then to top it all off her kids don't want to talk to her anymore and she feels like Job in the Bible and she prayed and prayed for her kids to come back prayed and prayed for her husband to come back but God didn't answer her prayers. And as I heard her speak, I heard her say something, one, Psalm 125-ish. She said, and this can be your prayer this morning too. Even as I walk through these valleys, Kevin, my trust is in who? The Lord. And that cannot be moved. 
My trust is not based in what happens to me, solely on who God is. I trust in God's character, that who that He is who He says He is. I trust that God surrounds me. I trust that just like the mountains surround Jerusalem, so I will place my trust in Jesus Christ, because Jesus is always faithful. God says to you this morning, will you trust me with the broken pieces of your life? Will you sing this song even if you stumbled? Will you get back up like Abraham and Sarah did and continue walking towards God's holy mountains? Continue walking in his steps. Amen. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Um, before we sing our last song, I'm going to read uh, from Jude to uh, to close. So I invite you to to stand as I read these last two verses and uh, as we sing our last song. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen.
That was a great service, don't you think? Yep. And the snacks were pretty good, too. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Road trips are the best, even when they're virtual. Thanks for joining us today. Next week, we'll be on our last stop of the Emmanuel Summer Road Trip out at Crossroads Community Church in Chilliwack. We'll see you then. Do you want to go for lunch? Yeah! All right.